Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath. Um, today, this song that I have for you, um, I just wanted to say a few words on it. The song that I have for you is was based was written by um, Ross Judson. He was he's a talented musician. His name is Ross Judson, and I just wanted to give him all the thanks and credit for this song. Some years ago, I actually had the honor of singing with him. So I just wanted to, with that pleasant memory, I thank you again, Ross Judson, and give all due credit to you. Um, this hymn, by this shall all men know, he based it on, on the scripture, John th chapter 13, verses 34 through 35, which I will read in your hearing, where the Messiah said, a new, co a new commandment I will give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all, all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one an if you love have love for one another. Um, yes, yeah, so and I will now play the hymn for you, brethren. Hope you enjoy it. And again, happy Sabbath. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath. Okay, um, today um, we're going to do something very interesting. We've we've done this a few times before. It'll be open sharing, and um, and what we will be doing today in open sharing is giving those who are willing and enable a chance to 
an opportunity, I should say, to to share um, an observation or understanding um, of of the scriptures or the works of his hands. That that is what Elohim shows throughout nature, throughout the world, naturally, of Yeshua, our Messiah. So, um, so we will not be doing a rank a one person teaching, but actually give everyone an opportunity to to share what what you have observed or understand either by the scriptures or by the works of Elohim something edifying about Yeshua our Messiah okay so um with that said before anyone starts i'll just read a little portion just to give you a little time to think ab about it and i uh, we normally announce this a little earlier but i'm sure that we will be ready to to share either from the scriptures or um, from our own experiences. My so first it says here in John. I'll just read a short portion of John, then I'll open the 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 floor. So once you are ready, just 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 be swift and and ready to start sharing what you want to share about Yeshua. Okay. So it says in John chapter one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, brethren, so that's a little bit from the Apostle John regarding our wonderful Messiah. Now, what do you have to share with the brethren today concerning Yesh Yeshua? Who wants to be the first to go? Quickly, just announce yourself and just please start sharing. Thank you. Shalom, everyone. I would love to start. And then... Brother Greg Hoseppel, Congregation Elham. And I would like to go over with you today, renewing your mind. So many times I I was thinking about this, and there's so many times that we seem to arrive and we have a certain aspect, something that we picked up or something that we brought into, and sometimes we carry it too long. So with all that being said, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. So we know we get older. We know that we, you know, things happen in life and we have all these problems going and all this going on. But with all that being said, there's nothing that we can't learn. We can't get down better. And this is, you know, speaking of myself as well, because we have these things. For example, you have a, you know, a, a so-called pastor that's in San Francisco and he believes, you know, he's been taught that, that, uh, you know, love and, and all these things. I'm trying to be careful with my wording because I don't want to, uh, you know, but he, he believes that like LGBT is okay because he was taught this and, and God is love and all these kind of things that we hear and it gets thrown around so easily. And he might actually believe that it might be a part of his program. But until we read that that's an abomination, it's not the way we should be, then we know that can't be a part of the congregation, right? So there's certain lines and certain things that are actually drawn and Yeshua says, you know, you love me, keep my commandments. So we know what love is, but we also know what loving him entails. It's not just what I want to do. It's not what, you know, someone else wants to do or even what someone comes up with. And that's a big thing, I believe, as well. When we have those thoughts, just like it says, that we renew those thoughts, that we renew them and we don't have any, you know, it's not my opinion, Brother Jackson, Brother John, Brother Felix, you know, Sheree, what do you think? It, it's not, now we use that as well, but it's all scripture, right? We we renew off of scripture. We learn off of scripture. We learn of how to live our life from the scriptures. And that's why we don't, you know, we don't like to just 
spitball here and say, well, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, we know because the scripture tells us so. Ephesians 4 and 23, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. So we have to have that. I mean, there's so many times, and I think we can all agree that when we have those aha moments, right? And coming out of Christianity or different things, and, and we're learning and we're learning and we're learning. And the more that we learn, we understand that is a renewing of our minds, the renewing of the spirit, the renewing. And we're always learning. We're always looking forward to the truth. And I believe that's where a lot of people fall short is they don't, they come to a point and they're happy there, right? It's just, I am happy right here in this building with these people. And I know we have a lot to learn, but, you know, let's just keep friends. Let's just keep everybody together and let's keep it, you know, the normal everyday thing or every weekly thing. And that usually becomes a disaster because people don't want to change. They don't want to renew their mind. Do not be anxious about anything. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Now, this is another, some of these are a lifelong, what I have found, what I'd submit to you, these are a lifelong journey in some of these verses. Do not be anxious about anything. That, when you come into troubles, problems, or even others, you know, when you're praying for others, you want, I want them to be healed. I want Brother Dennis to be healed today. I want him to get up. I want, you know, so we have to be careful into man-made what I want you know, that murmur, complain, I want it, and I want it now, as to his timing and watching in his timing. And in that watching, people learn as well. I learn why the brothers learn, why the sisters learn. We all learn, and we're actually renewing it, whether we know it or not, you know, from seeing how things happen. Some things look horrific, and it looks terrible, but then we understand his favor, his grace, and how everything works in his favor for those who are calling out to him. And it's just amazing to watch it in motion. But in everything by prayer and supplication. And, you know, that's a, again, I would submit to you, that's a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong, it's easy to say you're healed, you're, that's it, and it's over with. And it's great, but when it takes a while for something to happen and you have to keep praying, you keep putting in that time, and then how rewarding is it to know he's still hearing your prayers, he's still answering the prayers, but step by step, day by day, you know, and within that, I found that a lot of people learn, it's just like, you know, when we come up, when we're learning in school and we have kindergarten or this, or, you know, even homeschool, that there is markers that you have to meet to you go forward. Well, a lot of times I see the same thing in scriptures here, that there's markers, and when we meet them, he lets us go forth, because without that, we are not as effective as we can be or should be, maybe. But oh, in every whole sample. Yes. Hold on. Somebody's, somebody's got to mute their mic, because I hear... I don't know if it's only me, but I hear some something in the background. Oh, do you hear that? I don't hear anything, but let's, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt because I, I hear it, but I don't know why. Sorry about that, brother. All right. Everybody mute their mic besides Brother Holsapple, please. And... All right, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to Elohim. And the peace, the shalom of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in the Mashiach, Yeshua. And this is, you know, this is very, very important as well, because when you have these things going on, you know, there's so much that happens in life. I think we can all agree, right? I think there's so much going on that it's hard sometimes to understand. It's hard sometimes. There we go. I'll pull this up so everybody can see. And the shalom of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding and living this as well, that sometimes um, 
and not to brag on ourselves, but to brag on the creator, you know, the, his Ruach, the, the Shalom, that some of these places we go into, there, there's terrible, terrible heartbreaks. You know, some of the people like we pray for on a Friday night, you know, Amber, Michelle, some of these people are just so distraught because they think their life is over. You know, they're, they're just been told they got cancer. They just, uh, you know, and all this going on is just, it just shatters their peace. It just shatters their heart. It shatters their mind. And it's very hard to try to get someone to pick that back up, you know, and a lot of times even their, uh, their will, if you will, will be destroyed. And just like brother Dennis, you know, uh, I pray blessings upon him and everyone here as well, but he has stood through this so much of still calling upon Yeshua. He's still calling him out to Yahweh. He's still, and, and it's amazing to me that within all this, he knows he's eternal. Uh, you know, well, even if I pass, he says, then I'm going eternal. I'm going to have eternal life. So he sees the the bigger picture. And that is just so amazing to me. Uh, you know, to see and know instead of him being worried about this life and what's going on, he sees the whole picture of eternal and, you know, the scriptures of, oh, death, where is thy sting? And that just, it amazes me that his confidence, his faith and, and his shalom in them times, and he's still dealing with it. So moving on, set your minds on things that are above and on the things that are not on this earth. So, you know, there's so many times we can do that. We can look at the situation. We can look at politics. We can look at everything going on and say, oh, woe is me, you know, and so many people, oh, I'm like Job and all these things and on and on it goes. But actually, if we put our emphasis on that eternal, if we put that emphasis on what's truly going on, then I believe that matters so much, right? I'll just do a few more and... Let someone else have it. Psalms 119 and 11. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, this is something that we, again, another lifelong thing. We do not want to sin against the creator. We don't want to sin in any way. And that also entails sinning against my brother, saying things, doing things, hurting feelings, right? Uh, a lot of times we don't... Uh, living in this world of chaos and, and evil and all the things that's going on, we don't understand how much our words can hurt others and how much they can really, you know, damage, especially children coming up and everything like that. And if we was taught the right things, then we would understand those. And again, like I was saying about, you know, someone, we are a product of what we are raised or what we was taught until we break those chains, if you will, until we come up to the creator, until we come up to Yeshua and we are immersed and we do have a different body, mind, style. But even with all that being said, we have to be able to change and to understand it's his way and not my way. His thoughts are not my thoughts. You know, a lot of times in traveling and going places, I think I'm going to do this or I want to do this if i'm honest and i want to you know i plan things out and i got a plan and then the plan just seems to fall apart and it's like that is nothing of what i thought was going to happen but within all that we run into somebody that we have never met or we talk to someone or we do things and again all praise to yahweh that his ways are not mine my ways because my ways can be a train wreck my ways can be something totally different but his perfect steps his perfect ways are just so right and i just you know want to praise him again for that first peter 1 13 therefore preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of yeshua the messiah so again, we just put our hopes into him and we put everything into him and we know that he has everything for us. He said, I go on the way to prepare a place for you. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. So we, we live on faith. We live on truth. 
But a lot of people believe that faith is just faith and there's no actions, but there is actions. We see that. I see that, you know, there's, there's actually a work to be done. There's actually something to help others. And we see that, that with the Messiah, you know, he healed the sick, raised the dead, did all these things. And he said, you will do all these and more. So we have a lot to do. We have a lot to get done. In closing, I will just read you Matthew 7 and 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask of him? And I would ask you to keep that in the back of your mind when you're going through day-to-day -day activities as well. You know, when when we, and he, you notice he calls us being evil. He doesn't say we're good. He doesn't say we're great. Oh, you good child of mine. He says, if you being evil know to give good gifts to your children, how much more, you know, I mean, when you really think about that, wow, praise Yahweh, you know, how much more is he going to give us things that we think and run into these blessings that you just are, I'm amazed with. I'm amazed that, uh, the people that are healed, the people that he touches, and, you know, to to just see and be a part of that is such a blessing, to just be a part of it, to watch him working. So I just want to encourage every one of you, and I hope this has edified everyone, that, you know, keep pushing forward, but always have that mindset that, you know, we're renewing, we're renewing our mind and we're bringing our mind, hopefully, and again, I'm talking about myself and family as well, that, you know, we are bringing our mind to his mindset as much as we can. And we know there's a difference there, right? We know his ways are not our ways, but we're trying to bring our minds into that comparison or into at least looking at what he says and knowing the truth as opposed to, well... I just always done it this way. So I'm going to keep continuing doing it my way. And, you know, like that old song, I did it my way. And I think we know how that turns out in the end, right? So I hope again, it's edified. May Yahweh bless you all. Shalom. Thank you for listening. Shabbat Shalom. For that wonderful... Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brother Hosapple, for that um, wonderful teaching. Wow, really ready. Thank you. It, it was edifying, a, a, a blessing. But um, I didn't mention this um, just before our next speaker goes on. Um, be ready to, to, to do a one-sentence, two-sentence summary of why each one of you pre pre presented as a conclusion when everyone's done, okay? I'll, I'll let, you, let you know when, but think about a one-sentence, like, summary of what it is that you've just talked about or will talk about okay i i normally do it for everybody but i i think it's 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 even better to let each one of you do a, a summary statement of what you were you presented this so thank you again brother hosapple um from congregation of elohim in mississippi and illinois so um next brother next person who wants to speak go ahead Hello, brothers. This is John Patone. Glad to be with everyone today. Um, I just wanted to jump on Brother Holsapple's message here. Um, let me see how to share the screen real fast here. Mm, it's not sharing, right? No, take take your time, brother. Share the screen. Uh, here we are. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 5. All the commandments that I am commanding you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which Yahweh swore to give to your forefathers. You shall remember all the way which Yahweh your Elohim has led you in the wilderness these 40 years that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and let you be hungry 
and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Thus you are to know in your heart that Yahweh your Elohim was disciplining you just as a man disciplines his sons. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim to walk in his ways and to fear him. <clears throat> just to add to what Brother Holsapple said, why are we in this wilderness? You know, this, this world is a wilderness for us. You know, uh, this is our journey to the promised land. And, um, you know, it says there in uh, chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, that you may live, multiply, go in, and possess the land. Now, this is not the land called the nation state of Israel. This is the heavenly Jerusalem that's coming down out of heaven. And, you know, when we say out of heaven or down from heaven, you know, we get this wrong idea that heaven is uh, is above our head. You know, heaven is, among, you know, Yeshua said, heaven, you know, the kingdom of God is in your heart. The kingdom of God is present with us. It's another realm. You know, there's principalities and powers present right in our area. Maybe, you know, God, no, hopefully not in, in our houses, right? But they're, they're amongst us. That realm is transient. You know, these spirits are among us. It's not so far away. It's not uh, you travel into the upper space and into the universe and you eventually get to, to the heavens, to the kingdom of heaven. No, it, it's um, it's here. It's with us now. We we just don't see it and experience it with our senses right now. You know, there's a veil over our faces, so we have to remember that this life is for what purpose? It's to discipline you like a father does his son. The whole purpose of this existence. You know, we get so caught up in. This life and this existence and what we're doing and, you know, all the details and how busy we are and, you know, all of these things. And we consider this our life. This is not our life. This is our wilderness experience. We have to keep that in perspective or else we will get discouraged. We will we will lose faith. You have to trust that the struggles of this world are temporary and that we're we're, we're passing through. Let me just turn to one more passage here in Hebrews 11 to make the point. I got to find it here. Um, look at this, verse 8, Hebrews 11, 8. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it, okay. brother. Okay. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise. Well, what is that? You know, Yahweh promised him this land and sent him there. He dwelt in the land that was promised to him. But how did he live in that land that earthly realm that land of israel that's over there in the middle east how did he live in that land he lived in it as an alien you know we have to understand that we are aliens in a foreign land you know and this dispersion that we are in you know our our forefathers transgressed the commandments and so we were scattered to the four corners of this world we are aliens in a foreign place. And we need to understand that our king is coming to get us. And that we need to um, we need to, you know, redeem the time for it. The time is short. You know, these are the days where we must pursue holiness, sanctification, the love of the brothers, uh, the unity of the faith. 
You know, we must, this must be what we get consumed by and our lives are all about because, you know, of course we have to, you know, never have a job and make some money and eat and feed our families. And of course we have to occupy this land and, and be diligent to care for our family, but, but not because this is our life, but because that's the calling from heaven. And we need to be diligent in all these things because we do in everything that we do in words and in deed, we do it all to the glory of our father in the heavens. And um, so I just wanted to add those couple things to brother whole Sapple's message and exhort us to a higher life uh, to, you know, be sure that we don't idolize this existence. I think that, um, you know, I'm 55 years old, and uh, I think as a younger man, um, when you're trying to become something and, um, you know, you're trying to advance a young family and you're trying to do all these things, uh, you have more of a tendency to get caught up in the things that you're doing and the things that you're pursuing and you're drawn away from the kingdom of heaven on some level. But as you get older and you, you get closer to that, you know, the, the, talk, the clock keeps ticking and your time is running now, you know, you start to see the end. You know, I think um, I remember I, I've said this in the past. Um, when you're 20, you're looking ahead. When you're 30, you're still looking ahead. When you're 40, man, you start thinking a little bit. When you're 50, you see the end. You know, it's like you see, you can see, you know, you're headed somewhere and you have to make this time count. So I want to exhort all the young people and the older people that are listening to my voice. Redeem the time. The more you can realize you're an alien in a foreign land and you can put your focus on the kingdom of heaven and the things of, of Yahweh, the better off you're going to be. So hallelujah. Thank you for listening. Amen, Brother Batone. Great to hear. This is the first time I heard we heard Brother Batone speak of New, New in New Jersey, and it's been a blessing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And um, the next speaker. Amen. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, brethren. This is our brother Thompson. Hello. Shalom, Hello, brother. It's <laughs> okay. Thanks for uh, um, uh, responding. Yes, brethren. Yeah, a wonderful uh, um, uh, presentation uh, by our brothers there. Um, and uh, likewise, I just want to jump on 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 the theme, if you will. Um, I think that um, the spirit is right in this regard. Um, and I just want to share um, a few thoughts. Um, and uh, I just want to quickly um, go to um, Isaiah 57, 15. Um, it's, I don't know if someone can find that on the screen for me. I'm not yet adept at uh, jumping between screens with this thing. Um the size of 5715, it reads, uh, uh, for thus saith the high and lofty one, and my translation, this translation, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. And, um, and that uh, it's, it's a very uh, powerful little uh, scripture there, uh, and quite revealing. And in Psalms uh, 51, 17, uh, the Psalms 51, 17, it reads, uh, the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Um, o Elohim, thou, art, thou wilt not despise. So there's it's a certain... Going on. Can you still Sorry, hear? brother. I got. I got a mute. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have uh, um, 
uh, Heavenly Father is, is, is trying to show us the, the state of mind that we need to have, the state of the condition we need to be in. It's giving us clues here. A humble, a humble person, you know, and um, and and but that breaking of your of your heart is because your hearts are generally too hard. You see, we have a problem of of a heart being stony. We we can see in the the situation with the Israelites when they were out in the wilderness. Uh, one of our brothers talked about being in the wilderness um, of how that they had a problem with a stony heart. And um, and to to make a, um, a, a covenant with such a people was impossible. So we are at a time now where we are being presented with the same opportunity to be to establish covenant with the Most High, and to and to be in the right condition of heart and mind, uh, so that we can eventually um, be uh, truly. Um, uh, united as one, being in Echad with the Spirit and with the with each other as a, as the whole family of Elohim on the on the earth, and um, and for that to happen, we have to be humble. We have to come to that state of understanding that that we we are literally nothing in our flesh. You see, we need to be born from above, and um, that is something that needs to be constantly in our mind. Our brothers talking about looking. Look, looking forward and seeing the end, <laughs> and um, I, I, I understand what, what, what he's speaking of, but I, I like to look to another end. I'm, the, the end I'm looking for is the is is my is that my salvation turns into uh, something uh, beautiful and wonderful and glorious. Um, when we take on our new bodies, we are we will be transitioning to our new bodies um, at the resurrection. And even before then, we will see the resurrected Messiah risen in our hearts. So if we take a look at um, what Yeshua says, he says, uh, if you, in John 6, 5, 3, um, I don't know if someone could find that for me, John 6, 5, 3, and maybe share it on the screen. John 6, 5, 3. It's John 6, 5, 3. Because we're going to be reading a few, just a few lines from there. I don't want to take up too much time. I know somebody else would want to speak. So that's John 6, 5, 3. Thank you so much. I'm here. So, so John 6, 5, 3 reads, And then uh, Yeshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat my flesh, eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. So my advice is get as much of him as he can. You see? As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eats of this bread shall live forever. So what came down from heaven, it wasn't really about manna. It was a Torah. It's the living Torah that came down. See, to receive the Torah of Elohim is to eat his flesh, is, is, is to eat the flesh of Yeshua. See, if you don't, you're going to die. And you do, you die spiritually, as well as physically in the end. If you, if you, if you want to live, you got to eat, you got to eat, <laughs> you got to eat as much as you can, as much as this word. See, but the problem is people don't want to do that. See, they don't want to do that. They don't want to, to, to suffer because it, can't, it, comes, it comes with a suffering, see? So, because it comes with a testing. When Yeshua was in the wilderness, when he, when he went after his baptism with John, the dove, the Holy Spirit came down in the, in the appearance of a dove and rested on him and led him into the wilderness. The question is, will you be led in that wilderness to be tested the way Yeshua was tested? 
Let's go to Romans 7.21, just quickly. Um, I'm just going to quickly tie it up, but let's go to uh, Romans 21. Romans 7.21, my apologies. Romans 7, verse 21. See? So there's a problem. People don't want to go into the wilderness. They're afraid of the dryness. They're afraid they're going to get thirsty. They're afraid they're not going to get the food. Remember what it was like with those with, with the Israelites, well, how we read or how they complained. They wanted the flesh pots of Egypt. Okay. So Romans 7.21 reads, uh, I find then a law that when I would do good, yeah, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Elohim after what? The inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. You see those mind battles? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Okay. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See? So it's a death. So your mind, your mind wars against you. It doesn't want to do the things that uh, that that the Torah is requiring of us. See, so um, and it's like a death when you have to die. You have to you have to separate yourself from the body, from that body of death. See, I thank Elohim through Yeshua Messiah. So then, with my mind, I myself serve the law of Elohim, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we're fundamentally flawed in so many ways. And in so many ways, it disqualifies us even from being used of Elohim. And so your, your flesh and your mind, your flesh mind wants to go in another direction completely. It doesn't want to be subject to anything. Um, so first you're going to discover that that mind, that person, that, 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 that physical uh, mind of yours, that mind of yours doesn't want to be... Um, uh, go into rulership of the spirit, see, you discover that the greatest hindrance that you're going to find is, is that when, when Elohim is working in you, your other man is just going to get frustrated. See, so that's why you have to bring it into subjection with fastings and prayer, you see, and casting down all kinds of imaginations. And it happens all, all the time. We're constantly being attacked that way. And if you allow the spirit, the, 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 your flesh to have its way, Satan and his, and his cohorts will get into that and destroy fellowship. It will destroy your peace. See, So we have to um, bring our members into subjection as the apostles taught. So I don't want to get into it too much. I'm just going to just touch on that. I just wanted to really um, just share this little part because I heard my br brethren speak on on, on the things that they have. And I feel that this is a key point that we need to remember as believers, that we are constantly need to be uh, vigilant um, about how, what we think, how we think, and, uh, and casting down all kinds of imaginations and, and very fine things um, with our brethren if we fall out of odds with each other and, and come back together as soon as we can um, in love, you see? And... and and when we do this, Satan doesn't have any place to go. You know, he, he, there's nowhere. He, there's, he, he'll have nothing in us in the end, you see. But uh, it comes down to us growing and maturing daily in the Ruach. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and in the end, we, 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 will have, we will see and have the victory and become manifested sons of the living God with the authority um, of sons in the earth. So uh, bless you. I, I, I hope this has been a, a useful for you. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that little part. And thank, thank you, Brother Thompson from United Kingdom. Thank you very much. Um, it, we have time for one more speaker. If we would have anyone who wants to share. Okay, so I must. All right, brothers. Hey, 
yeah, I, I just raised my hand, but <laughs> I was, I didn't, yeah, I just uh, had the raised hand. So I'll say something. Uh, I don't know how brief I can put it, but I'll say it from uh, from what I hear there. So I'll start with um, this. Uh, our brother Hosapo did read something about, I mean, uh, mentioned something about love from the beginning. And then uh, it's, it's all, and then our, and our brother, of course, Jackson, you did mention that these things would be focused about Yeshua. So I'll see as focused as I can get to Yeshua as possible to all this, because it's all about Yeshua. So I'll read, uh, uh, so Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, that will be the focus of the reading. And then I'll just, a couple of verses here and there for, to, uh, as reference point, right? So uh, our brother, uh, this this week, me and my brother Gene were talking, and then somehow uh, Deuteronomy, I believe the book of Deuteronomy, and the, and, uh, the father was speaking, and I believe to with Moses, uh, uh, possibly Joshua, but I don't recall the the, uh, the, ch the chapter exactly. But yeah, to, to 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 Moses exactly, and he says, and he says, as surely as I live forever. And I was I'm I'm imagining this sight of uh, of, uh, of if we were able to look at him living forever. And then we just saw as he read in the book of Malachi, there in uh, chapter. Uh, 3 verse 6 it says I am the eternal I change not and then of course it was a reprimand therefore I do not consume you you sons of Jacob for their for their likeness right so he's a father he loves them and he does the good things toward him and his judgment it would be right whatever judgment he comes with so he he decides to be love and he he manifests his love in a different way that we have uh, regarding salvation, because that's that that's his goal from the beginning to have salvation. And our brother uh, Hosapo did mention earlier, like as he's visit, he knows some uh, ministers here and there, and how people call what they call love, and uh, and love is something pure. It's an, as First Corinthians will tell chapter thirteen. Also, uh, it says love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, does not boast, is not proud. So it doesn't have anything uh, wicked in there. So when somebody said they love each other, or somebody might say, in this case of gender, I love this person, a woman, and a man, vice versa. And uh, depending on what you do with it, the uh, pure you keep it, then the love will not be defiled. If you keep it well, then it's not be defiled. But if you're a person who's jumping from one person to the other, that definitely that's not love. I was, I've met quite a few people on my road and they think, I said, that's not love, that's the lust. And then you move on to the next. So that's not love. And so they call these places that they call um, churches, as we call it, our brother mentioned it, like a cir circuit or circus that they are, uh, love centers these days. They are giving a name, they're trying to, glorify them, put them in a pedestal where they do not belong because it promotes more wickedness than anything else. So it's a synagogue of the evil that they've, you know, they've gathered under those roofs to promote. There's no one preaching against everything that is wrong now. So I'll just so we just read what uh, First Corinthians, what uh, chapter 13, what love is. And then, so we can read the whole chapter, but Philippians chapter 2, focusing on Moses and Messiah. If there be any consolation in me, Yeshua, Messiah, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, first to fulfill ye my joy, and be, and ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, the unity we've been speaking about. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem it other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this be in you, which was also in Yeshua, Yeshua Messiah, who being in the form of Elohim, thought it not robbery to be equal with Elohim, but it made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even unto the death of the execution stake. 
throw the stick of execution. Wherefore, Elohim also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Yeshua, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yeshua is Messiah, is, is Messiah and is ruling, is sovereign to the glory of the Father, of Elohim the Father. So that is who Messiah is. So we will hear him and uh, so that he may be shown to us. And I, uh, so going back to what we, uh, our prayer time last night, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're talking about our brother Dennis, how he perseveres despite his pain, broken bone, because he had this cancer. Brother Hosapa could feel you in more of his group with his uh, grueling suffering. But yet he said something that's very refreshing. He said, I want to live Yeshua forever and ever and ever. He said last night. So as before we started our prayer time. So as our brother Hosapo does this um, uh, teaching on herbs, healing herbs, all the things the Father put for, for on our behalf to use. Um, so uh, not to uh, linger on this. And then we move into the prayer part and I ask uh, brother Dennis, how he's feeling? He said he's, he's holding on, he's persevering basically, and he wants to live with Yeshua forever. So he's persevering, as our brother mentioned, uh, in this, um, I can be in such a cruel, a harsh, grueling situation, yet only, only Yeshua, the Father, can hold someone and uh, not to lose uh, hope, become hopeless. And the thing is, so. May he be healed, may be, uh, all these things be in his favor as we pray for him and the others as well uh, to persevere. And lastly, I like what uh, Brother uh, Bouton says, as uh, he, he look at his, at his years from growing to a young man, 20, then, you know, 30, and then at 50, he says what he says, because wisdom is set, because it, uh, according to Psalm 90, verses 12 and the last one of as a verse uh, and verse 16 almost done so verse 12 says so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and verse 16 says let i'm sorry uh and verse 17 says and let the beauty of the eternal our elohim be upon us and establish the work of our hands yea the work of our and establish it so he's telling us to be wise basically i like the way uh, brother, it's a life. It's a beautiful life. Uh, the way uh, Brother Butonji explained it, it's a life uh, passing through. Uh, sometimes people use it the term pilgrim life, so to speak. But it is you'll be on a pilgrimage of this world's government to uh, to Yeshua's government that we just read in the in chapter uh, Philippians chapter two, putting him above every name that at the name of Yeshua. Uh, Things of heaven, if I can go back to that chapter, and you can read it. I don't, I'm just paraphrasing at this point because I lost the page. Things of heaven on earth, under the earth, shall bow. And I stop my comment, brother. Oh, thank you, brother Felix. <laughs> Felix is normally our host, doesn't <laughs> teach much, but often, but he taught today. Amen. Thank you. Um, this has been very wonderful. It's, it was, a blessing to hear the brethren teach um, today. Share. I, I hope everyone else was was blessed, even more blessed than you know. Um, but I want before we end to ask the. Um, oh, do we have another speaker? Before I continue, someone else wants to speak. Uh, shalom, shalom, it's Brother Carville here. Hi, Brother Carville. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, shalom, uh, shalom to all the saints. Yes. Uh, it, uh, as I was listening to the saints speak and, you know, something uh, just came to my mind and uh, uh, looking at the life of uh, Yeshua himself, uh, the Christ, the Messiah, um, you know, I, I look at the words that he said um, when he said to the woman of, at the well that, um, you know, that the, the living God neither seeks anyone to worship in this this mountain or, or at Jerusalem, but he seeks um, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, when you think about it, that many of the main uh, feast days and, and so on 
could not be kept unless they were kept at Jerusalem in the uh, in the temple. It was uh, operated around the temple. And yet, Yeshua prophesied of the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, and it came to pass. Uh, so it's like, what, what is the Father saying to us through all this? Is that uh, he wants worshippers who worship him in spirit and truth. He will not have something where we are um, forced to worship him, to come to worship him somewhere on pain of death. He was saying now, uh, he's going to seek those who truly want him, truly want to be faithful to, to him, truly seek him. And unfortunately, we have a situation now whereby so many um, different sects and, and so on have sprung up in Christianity and beyond, uh, directing people to worship God, how certain individuals, you know, think that they should worship God. And um, you notice anything, even when the, the, the worship was given to, to, to Israel, um, that they went to the, the, the point and the, the length of they corrupted the, the worship, that even, <laughs> even their sacrifices was not palatable to the living God anymore. And it, it, everything that man has, man seemed to want to twist it and corrupt it. And, you know, someone says, well, okay, um, uh, uh, you know, I want to worship God or I want to worship God. I want to do what I want to do. You know, uh, let's say, uh, okay, King Henry, I'm the King of England. And, um, you know, I want to get rid of my wife. Uh, mm, what can I do? I want to marry someone else. But the faith said I should not divorce my wife, save for the sake of fornication. So what does he do? He forms his own sect, his own Church of England. So that's his now and goes off in another direction and then has his wife killed and then or imprisoned and then gets someone else and he does it several times. Well, this is the mentality of human beings. I'm saying this to say that um, if you look at what the living God has done and, you know, read his words carefully, that he wants us to love him and to follow him out of free will. You know, someone asked the question, um, I was listening to something earlier, someone asked the question, uh, well, God says we will go to, you know, we'll be in heaven with him and so on, and that um, how can sin be in heaven? Because there will be no sin, no more crying, no, no more tears. Well, how come Satan was in heaven and sinned? And the answer was that God was testing. God gave everyone a free will, even the angels. They had to be tested. And they were tested, and those that were f found wanting were passed out. They, they, they were removed because something was found within them. So we know that Shatan and his, uh, those that uh, one third of the angels that followed him were cast out. So even today, um, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, the word of God say we should be of one heart, one mind, because there's one faith, one baptism, one Lord, and yet we all always sort of going off and doing our own thing. You know, what I'm saying is that we have to say to pray to the living God to give us that heart, because the true people of God will come together. And so sometimes there is some problems. Yes, I understand, because depending on what level uh, each individual is at. And sometimes you may hear a brother or sisters say something. If you don't understand what they're saying or where they're coming at, do not accuse them. Try to get to the, uh, the, 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 the bottom of what they're saying. Because we're, we're coming from a broken world. As Yeshua said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We don't want to be in the world and of the world. We want to be in the world to do the work of the Father, but not of the world. And therefore, if we're going to be in the world and not of the world, we have to understand that we, coming from the world, we all come with our own isms and schisms. We all come with our own earthly, sensual, and devilish understanding. 
And uh, some of us come with an open heart to the Father. Some of us come with uh, things that are is in our hearts. And sometimes we go off and we go around and we we do things how we believe and think it ought to be. And we think that others uh, have to accept some of the isms that we brought from the world. Right. We are, we are called to, to, to tolerate and help and, and instruct and, and bring each other along the way together. But be careful of your thoughts, be careful of your words, because sometimes what you understand may be something, uh, it may be something that you brought with you from the world, because, you know, there are some things in the world that seems good, that seems right. Um, yeah, it was it, it was good to have nuclear weapons as a as a you know to 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 vanquish the enemy. Okay, but it's a it's a dangerous and destructive thing, and it can kill. So it has good use, can generate power, but it's it's so dangerous, and it's dangerous in the hands of the wrong individuals. And sometimes, what is in our heart? Sometimes we've brought along contamination from the world. Uh, understand if the living God himself brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, did all those wondrous miracles before them, and still they grieved him and vexed him and turned from him at every point. Because, the, you know, they said, oh, why did he bring us out into this wilderness? Think of the melon, the cucumbers, and the, uh, of so on, so on in Egypt. Because there's always things back in the world that we 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 hunger for. We you know we it's still in our hearts, in our minds, and if the mind is not truly renewed, and 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 we don't understand, we will hold on to those things, and it will destroy us, and it will cause us to to hate our brother, to condemn our brother, to judge our brother, not realizing that we are doing that which is wrong. And I'm telling you, saints, to. When he talks about how this, that mind that was in Christ, it is not an easy thing to attain to. But it takes dedication and it takes true desire and love to stand firm, hold on to the unchanging hand of the living God, love our brother, right? Because, you know, to, to love somebody is something very serious. And to, to esteem your brother above yourself is another level. Um, most of the time we fall short of that. But um, I'll just say, saints, think about these words and, you know, strive and start, try to, strive to understand and look into ourselves and understand that there are some things that we have brought from the world, some isms and schisms, some philosophies, some doctrines. That it, it sounds right. You know, it feels right to us because we were so embedded deeply in it, embedded, that we it's in our heart and we've brought it along and we do not realize the harm and the damage it has done to us and we still haven't let go of it. And we need to let go of it, that God can fill our hearts, remove the doctrines of the world, and we can see what's going on, saints. We can see all the gender fluid, all the different things that is craziness that is actually going on is the Satan is really um, piling the pressure on and pe people are being diverted the wrong way. And we know that many of our brothers and sisters in the different various sects of Christianity and so on, many of them are lost and many of them are not going to make it. And we've got to make sure we make it and we can be a light to them and to the rest of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brendan. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amen. So do we wish we could continue? Um, but due to the, the the time, I'm going to ask that each brother, beginning with Brother Hosapple, um, give a one to two sentence summary of what what is it you you want the body of Messiah to hold on to from all that you've said earlier. One to two sentences, three sentences, you know, just real short. One to two, three sentences, okay? Beginning with Brother Hosapple. Go, dear brother. All right. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Yes, I just want to uh, reiterate there that renewing your mind, your thoughts, and your ways, and bringing them into the way of the Creator. 
And that's that, you know, that's like the theme I've heard all day from each and every one of us. So shalom, blessings. Thank you, dear brother. Brother Batone? Yeah, I thought of the, the psalm to sum this up. You know, teach me to number my days that I may not sin against you. Just remember, you know, that this world is not your own. And we are aliens in a foreign land. And look for the heavenly city that's coming and live for it now. Amen, brother. You guys are bringing tears to my eyes here. Thank you. Um, brother Thompson in UK, please go ahead. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You're, uh, it's like, like Brother John. Um, uh, David said, uh, your word have I hid in my heart. Your Torah have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you. So I'll come with that one. And I'll just also say um, that um, we are um, all here because we, are, we I believe we are the elect of the Most High. And he, uh, there's a standard for us uh, that is being presented to us through his Torah and his word. And I'm thankful that we are, we are discovering that together and that we are on this path together. Um, and it, to, sum up, to summarize everything really is, is, is for me to see that our brethren uh, come to full maturity um, in the spirit um, so that we can be ready as a virgin prepared for uh, her husband, uh, in this case, in Messiah. So um, it's, 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 it's just that, really. Amen. Thank you, dear brother. Um, brother Felix, what would you say um, to summarize what you've shared today about Yeshua? Yes, about Yeshua. Yes, brethren. So thank you, all of you, for all your, what you put in. And according to what, uh, what I heard before, I was able to put my thoughts together. So uh, that is uh, is a sanctification without which we cannot see the Father, right through Messiah. So He is the will sanctify, and the love that He want us to understand. We read it through. We was read it in uh, in the Corinthians. We just read it in uh, Philippians. The love. If there's any love, you know, to make the joy perfect. So it's those things uh, to make us to, to give us this beautiful life, not the circus life of the outside churches of stone and and whatever glass of whatever thing it is but but uh, the, the beautiful community of of love base and the righteousness in Yeshua and, and the father that's what I want thank you brother Felix and lastly brother Carvel can you tell us um, what you want to say to summarize all that you you've shared with us brother uh, yeah Shalom um, I just want to uh, just a verse in there, a few verses in Jeremiah 10. And it says, um, There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and great is in your name in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? Indeed, it is your due. For among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. But they are altogether stupid and foolish in their discipline of delusion. Their idol is wood. And it goes on. So Jehovah he is, the, he is the one and only. Um, as it was said, we are in the world. We are not of the world. And the wisdom of the world is foolish. Let us not bring the wisdom of the world into uh, amongst the body of, of Messiah. Let us seek the wisdom that comes from above at all times. Amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you, brethren. Thank you, Brother Hosapel, Brother Batone, Brother Thompson, Brother Felix, Brother Carvel. Thank you so much. I thank Elohim for each one of you for um, speaking from your, your hearts and, and all that he has shown you in your individual lives and you've shared with the brethren today. Thank you. It's been a blessing, and we look forward to doing more of, of, of these open sharing. So thank you. Um, we thank Elohim, and we thank all the uh, all of us um, from the um, op opening, from the song from Shere Shere, the reading of the Psalms, beginning with Sister Vash, um, 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 I'm sorry, Sister Vashti, Brother Savane, and Malachi, everyone who has shared. Um, and, and one of the ways the, 
our sister Vashti put it last year, um, I think last week or the week before. Uh, she said, this is what I, I, I have to bring as an offering to Elohim today. And, and that's how we, we have to, to think it, as Sister Vashti says. This is our offering. And each one of you who, who teach and who host have shared today. Blessed be the name of the Eternal who has blessed us with such blessings. And I, um, I don't, I don't want to say too, too much. Um, so, um, I'm going to turn it over back now to Brother Felix. Okay. So, do we have a song, Shuri? Well, let's stop the recording first. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> 